Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our regular meeting. I will now call the meeting to order. The agenda is there before you. Can I have a motion to approve, please? Moved by Deputy Mayor, seconded by Councillor Crowley. Further discussion? All those in favor, those against, motion is carried. Minutes of the meeting from March 5th. Are there any errors or omissions? All good. Business arising. All good. Okay, uh, under the mayor's update, I have one item that I'm uh, pleased to announce this evening. As mayor and on behalf of my fellow council colleagues, I'm pleased to announce the appointment of our newly elected councillor Tilly to the Recreation and Community Services Committee along with her recent appointment to the Public Safety Committee. Through Councillor Tilly's extensive experience with search and rescue, she has a broad understanding and recognition of public safety. Also, her organization has been extensively involved and supports many aspects of community events. Both, portfo both portfolios are a perfect fit for Councillor Tilly and I'm sure she will be a valued asset serving on those committees, as former Councillor Buckle was in these respective roles prior to his departure. We wish Mabel all the best in her new portfolios, as I'm sure she will provide full dedication and commitment to these council duties. So congratulations, Councillor Tilly. Okay, that's the mayor's update. Uh, we'll move on now to correspondence. There's one piece there, and that's from Mayor's Contracting. So I'm going to read this out, and then I'll turn it over to Public Works to elaborate. Uh, and this was addressed to our CAO. I'm, I am writing you today requesting consideration from Council and or the Department of Planning, Infrastructure and Public Works to defer the start date of the Salmon Air Line water supply project from April 15, 2024 to July 22, 2024. Our request to defer is a result of a request from a neighboring community, the town of Bay Roberts, that we start their water line job as soon as possible. As you are aware, the town of Bay Roberts are playing host to the provincial summer games during August 10th to the 17th, 2024. In an effort of cooperation with the town of Bay Roberts and essentially the province, we agreed to start their project first to ensure we complete all road excavation work prior to the start of the games in an effort to reduce frustrations with infrastructure work on a busy street. If our request is approved, you have my word by this letter that we will begin your project on or before July 22, 2024. We've had a great working relationship with the town previously on the installation of your new soccer pitch, and I anticipate this summer's project will be no different. I will add, deferring your job until July leaves adequate time to install the water line and have asphalt completed before winter temperatures set in. All material required to execute this work has been procured and is sitting in Worsley's yard in St. John's. I await your decision and thank you in advance for your consideration. And that's from Frank Marr from Marr's Contracting Limited. So, Councillor Windsor, would you like to elaborate a little bit further on that? Please. Well, I think uh, I don't really need to elaborate on the request so much uh, as a comment or recommendation on whether to accept or, or reject uh, uh, what the contractor is asking for. I think that in the norm normal circumstances, I'm a stickler for contract terms, right? And uh, living up to commitments and completing uh, projects by the dates that they were uh, committed to. However, that being said, um, you know, we are good community partners. Uh, with our neighboring communities and also the province. This is a very important event for that community and the province. Also, this particular contractor has a very good track record 
uh, performing work uh, in our community and for other communities. So, I mean, we take him at his word, and um, uh, my recommendation is to accept that. Um, I also think that we should update our contract to the date, you know, as he is requesting. I have no issue with it. Um, as stated, uh, the project can be completed during the summer months. No problem. No problem from my perspective. I don't know if my co-chair, Sadie, has any commentary on it. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, sir. And, uh, yeah, I, I fully concur. Um, you know, it is a neighboring community, a neighboring partner, and given the fact that they've got, you know, a very important event with the provincial summer games, and there's going to be a lot of people, you know, visiting the town of Bay Roberts, and I'm sure the town would like to have as much of this work is done to make things run as smooth as possible. So, you know, there's, we're only dealing with a few months delay here. So I, I think that, you know, that, that's, uh, that's acceptable. So any other questions or comments? Okay. Will that require a motion? Okay. So we're, we're okay. Okay. All right, and we certainly wish the town of Bay Roberts um, all the very best and much success with the provincial uh, summer games coming up this summer. All right, planning and development, Deputy Mayor Woodford and Councillor Windsor. Good evening, everybody. Uh, the Planning and Development Committee we met on March the 20th with uh, our CAO Marjorie Gibbons, our Public Works Director Robert Stacy, Councillor Steve Windsor, and myself in attendance. Uh, Krista Turnbull was on annual leave at the time and not able to attend. Two applications were received uh, and reviewed uh, during our meeting. Um, one did not have a certified pl plan attached to it, so we went back and requested that from the applicant, so that will be put on the next uh, agenda. Um, and another required further information as well um, and an investigation before we made a recommendation to council. Uh, one piece of correspondence was received from a resident um, regarding rezoning of their property. Uh, and as the town is currently involved in the final stages of our new town plan, um, no rezoning will be considered at this time. We've taken a stance on that and have received lots of um, input into, uh, you know, why we're, we're doing that. But, you know, when we're in the final stages, uh, let's roll out that plan. And if anyone, you know, wants to attend our public consultation sessions, which they'll be up and coming and, and um, on our social media sites for people who want to attend uh, and provide input then. Um, so, you know, the, um, a letter went out to the resident with regards to all that information. Um, another piece of correspondence was received as well regarding proposed amendments from the town of Whitless Bay, and we have a motion uh, for that this evening. And finally, the committee was also updated on several older files um, regarding the review of the permits issued uh, for those files and discussion into the conditions or the scope of these permits and how the town can move forward um, with addressing non-compliance and non-permitted development. And we're seeing, um, we're seeing a little bit more of that, unfortunately. Um, so the committee agreed that our current permitting process uh, we're going to continue with our current pro permitting process, which follows a consistent set of regulations and guidelines. Um, so, we're, you know, we are doing what we're supposed to be doing. And we're going to continue to support staff as well uh, to follow up on these permits regarding some site visits and discussions with residents in order to facilitate um, keeping within the scope of the permit. Uh, we do have uh, some motions, but before I move to those tonight, I'm going to turn it over to my co-chair, Steve Windsor, um, if you'd like to add anything. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, there's one thing to add um, under the, uh, I guess, the planning umbrella. 
Um, we had disbanded the Operational Review Committee, so this is probably the best place for that to uh, fit. And I think it's important for us to provide an update to Council and residents on what has transpired uh, recently and over many months since Council voted to accept the consultant's report, Mr. Curran, on operational review and strategic planning initiatives. So the update uh, for everybody uh, to be aware of, there were two sessions held in the month of March, uh, one with staff and one with Council, where the consultant uh, presented and reviewed uh, the action register um, and tracked them to completion where we are now with a current status report. Um, so it was very encouraging to hear that uh, many of the initiatives that were recommended, accepted by Council uh, have been completed. Uh, many more of them have uh, been put in progress and are nearing completion. Um, the consultant will be required to complete a, a closeout report that will be a record of everything that was done and actioned. So for everyone's information, I guess uh, you know, I could summarize that by saying it is a, uh, you know, the organizational structure and the changes that were recommended. That was probably the biggest piece, I think, uh, in roles and responsibilities and a not clear understanding of the interfaces between the different department structure and, and reporting protocols and so on. Um, and many other actions underneath that. So I don't think it would be not enough time, I don't think, to, to get into all of that, other than to say that uh, we were very satisfied that um, so much work had been done and um, put in place and is in motion. Um, I think it's, on, it's important for everyone to understand that uh, these things take time and uh, we should be uh, patient as they roll out to ensure it's done properly. Because um, I think it would be uh, a worse outcome to have spent the time and money, certainly, on the, you know, the consultant, all the effort, and uh, rush things out and make a mess of it. Right? So, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. And in summary, we're well underway and we're very satisfied with the progress. More to come here. We will have a closeout report documenting everything that was done. Did I miss anything, Deputy Mayor? Okay. Well Thank said. You. So first uh, is our permits, be it resolved to table and approve the attached permit listing. There were 11 permits issued from February 6th to April 1st, 2024, including permits for residential, site prep, ramp, occupancy, and garage extension. So moved. Moved by Deputy Mayor Woodford, seconded by seconded by Councillor King. Further discussion? If not, all those in favor, those against, motion carried. And the next is from the Town of Whitless Bay, uh, the proposed amendments. The Town has received a proposed amendment to the St. John's Urban Regional <clears throat> Plan from the Town of Whitless Bay. Uh, proposed amendments, proposed St. John's Urban Regional Plan 1976, Amendment Number 9, 2023, Proposed Whitless Bay Municipal Plan Number 4, and Development Regulations Amendment Number 5, 2023. Ooh. Be it resolved that the Town of Holyrood has no comment on the proposed amendment from the Town of Whitless Bay. So moved. Moved by Deputy Mayor, seconded by Councillor Crowley. No comment from me. Clear as mud. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all those in favor, please raise your hands. Those against, motion is carried. And that's it from Planning and Development. Mayor, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Deputy Mayor. And now we'll move on to recreation and community events. So we have Councillor Sadie King and our new Councillor Mabel Tilly. Well, our recreation committee didn't have a chance to meet since our last regular meeting, but that doesn't mean planning stopped. We had Easter to get off the ground, and the Easter activities are going well. We had a great turnout of over 100 children for the Easter egg scramble on March the 24th. 
slime making on March the 25th saw a sold out crowd. And the Easter movie went great, and Easter camp has over 35 children registered. The summer employment opportunities have been advertised with a deadline of April 30th. Job descriptions can be found on our website. And now we're into big planning because we have the, the Squid Fest coming up this summer. So at this point, we're able to announce the lineup and people are very excited about this. We have Shani Ganok, The Navigators, Vic and the Ballpoints, Kitchen Party, and Rock Revival. Tickets will go on sale on April the 30th, and there will be more details following. That's it for me. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you very much, yes. Councillor King. I don't think it was any press. I guess. <laughs> 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 nice <time. laughs> Next meeting you will. <laughs> Okay, uh, any questions or comments on that? Okay, thank you very much. And now we'll move on to infrastructure and public works. So we have Councillor Windsor and Councillor Sadie King. Back again. Back so again, soon. Sir. Try to keep it short. I already have enough to say here. I've got a quote on words, hey? Eh? Um, infrastructure and public works committee, we, we met on March uh, 21st, and the committee members in full attendance. So that would be the mayor, director, um, CAO, myself, and colleague, uh, Councillor Sadie King. And um, the number one discussion point in that meeting, really, at that time, if you recall, that was we had just come through that uh, storm event, right, where we had all that snow on the ground, and we had a, you know, a big, big rainfall. So a lot of discussion around that, um, some damages that occurred in different areas of the town, and we reviewed lessons learned, positive and negative, and how infrastructure public works department interfaces with safety and the fire department. Um, so it was a good discussion. Um, you know, things didn't go perfect, but they went pretty darn good. You know, could have been a lot worse. And what I will say, and you know, as a shout out to staff in particular, is that you know every single resident who called in here with an issue got a response, all right, in a courteous, professional manner, in a timely manner when. It, it was practical to do so on a prioritized basis, right? So that was very good. I mean, it was really good to hear that feedback around the communication in particular. I think there's some things that we can do um, better, and, and we're documenting that and uh, developing a like a, a one-pager action plan. I think it could be future collaboration with the safety committee. Um, so more to come there. Um, public works, from the public works lens only, um, they did some very good things, um, you know, ahead of time. Um, work orders were opened and investigated known problem areas from past weather events. Um, you know, pumps and readiness, uh, you know, they were checked, they were working. Additional pumps were rented in case they were needed. Sandbags were filled, things of that nature. So that, that was a lot of discussion in our committee at that time. Uh, the other uh, discussion point was around water and sewer projects. We're coming into a very short construction season and um, you know we want to make sure we get things done and, and there's always a uh, an urge to get shovels in the ground but realistically we need to temper that with doing things correctly um, that's the subject of a, a motion here to defer a timeline on one project in particular um, disappointing when that happens but I think it's more valuable and more important uh, to get things right. So we'll get to that motion in a moment. Um, some of the larger discussion of water and sewer in generally was about bringing back to all of council more information. I, I don't want it to just sit with this committee. There's a lot of details here. Um, say, for example, the, a water sewer, pro sewer project in particular, I would like the engineering consultant to come in and present, meet with council. Um, there are a lot of uh, uh, technical uh, uh, parts of the project. Uh, they're very long lead material, six, eight months lead times and things like that. Um, municipal affairs, you know, we're going to put out uh, two RFQs on that. And uh, again, it needs to be done right. And like all of you to understand what we're doing and what we're going to commit to there. Um, same goes for the water extension. 
um, we have three million available to us in funding, and how do we spend that wisely? Right, the site preparation only, and not do some of the uh, uh, mechanical outfitting. That could be a phased approach, right? So that was a big discussion agenda item for infrastructure public works. But I want to come back to you guys again, and. Um, we have a separate session with the engineering consultants. <coughs> we'll do a presentation, go through that. Everyone has a good understanding. Those are the big things. There's a few little things that we were talking about. Um, there were um, snow clearing requests. Well, I hope that just goes away now. I think we all do. Um, we're not going to forget about it. We'll note it, but we'll get to it you know, right next fall. Um, there were two items around uh, requests to um, uh, extend infrastructure lines, like one is a water line extension um, that a resident came back and requested, will we consider that? And um, no, uh, that's not in the budget at this point in time. And sometimes we have a cost recovery program. If an area is going to be developed, and you know, we'll take that on, and uh, as new homes hook on, and the cost uh, comes down. Not in the budget for this year, for that particular area at all. Um, sewer main, uh, similar. Um, but a lot of detail required. Um, start with the survey. Deputy Mayor mentioned the survey in a different item earlier tonight. We're just trying to shore up the details that come in here before someone has a handshake agreement and says, yes, sure, go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. That is the behavior that we have changed, I think, since we've been sworn in, and I'd like to see it continue in that manner. That's the update from the committee meeting. I don't know if I missed anything, uh, Councillor King. Satisfied with that? Okay. <laughs> I'll go ahead with the. <laughs> um, I'll go ahead with um, the motion. We'll give you a little preamble on that. This is a t this is the tank job. This is the new tank. Okay. And um, you know our engineering uh, consultant and staff uh, have been engaged regularly and have met and discussed with municipal affairs. How do we best do this? You know, there's a, you know, some challenging um, infrastructure there, uh, the civil work that needs to be done, the topography. Um, so the preamble's before you. I don't need to read all that because you, you are aware from past meetings where we've divided the civil work and the mechanical works. So that's that. But um, we do need to do a site plan. We're not getting this done in June 2024. We all know that, right? At this point in time, so that's going to go out to the fall, uh, October of 2025. I think that is quite reasonable, given where we are right now in the details with the engineering firm and municipal affairs, uh, most importantly, because they're the funding mechanism, right? So we make sure they're satisfied. Um, I'll read the motion. You guys have any comments or questions or discussion? We can do it then. Uh, extension to water upgrades project. Be it resolved, the town of Holyrood requests an amendment to project number. 17-GI-21-3049, water supply upgrades, to change the completion date from June 2024 to October 2025. This amendment is required to further investigate a site plan which would eliminate booster pumps and provide the time required to issue a new design build contract for tank design supply only. So moved. Okay, moved by Councillor Windsor, seconded by Councillor King, further discussion? And I think you've explained that very well, Councillor Windsor. Um, one of the points that you did make is that, you know, there's a lot of money involved here. It's cost-shared funding. We're working with, you know, the provincial government. We're working with uh, or municipal affairs. We're working with engineers. Uh, we want to ensure, as you say, that we want to make sure that we get it right when these projects are done, not for the sake of expediency. And any time you're spending significant amounts of money on major infrastructure, we want to ensure that it's done efficiently and effectively. And you know, if it means a delay, well, I think in the long run, we're much better off. So that's all I have to say. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. And to support that comment, you know, the majority of the funding is from the province. It's not residents of Holyrood's uh, right. taxes, but it's still taxpayers' money. And I do not want to be 
wastefully spending taxpayers' money unless it's providing value. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. With that said, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Those against? Motion is carried. And that's it for infrastructure and public works. Thank you. And now we'll move on to economic development. Deputy Mayor. <coughs> The Economic Development Committee, we met on March the 11th uh, with our CAO, Marjorie Gibbons, and myself in attendance. The mayor was unable to attend. Uh, there was one piece of correspondence that was uh, discussed from a resident, uh, and a response was drafted to that individual. Uh, Marine Institute also reached out and asked us to collaborate with them on a grant they are applying for to improve their outside space. So I think it's basically a beautification type of uh, uh, grant that they're looking for. There will be no financial contribution um, required from the town, just a letter supporting them in their, uh, in their application for their funding. Uh, we also continue to discuss uh, the upcoming business session. Um, we've kind of put that off to June now instead of May, because it's going to require some, uh, some intricate planning because uh, this session is going to be a larger session than what we've had in the past and it's going to bring in different groups, it's going to bring in local businesses, it's going to bring in um, you know, interested uh, individuals that are coming, that want to come to Holy Road and do business and you know, hopefully probably get Marine Institute involved and other stakeholders within the community involved as well. Um, so what we're looking at there is there is funding available um, for uh, an event planner for this particular event. And um, we decided at the committee level to, you know, to, to recommend that, to go forward and hire or put out, to, to put out uh, a job ad with regards to an event planner. Um, and I'm hoping that if that hasn't gone out yet, that it will be. Okay, perfect. So it will be in the shoreline and our, on our social media sites as well? Yes. Perfect, perfect. So have a look for that. Um, and let's see. And that's it, I think, for, for our Economic Development Committee. Okay. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor. Any questions, comments? All right. And now we'll move on to public safety. And we have Councillor King and Councillor Tilly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we had our public safety meeting on the 19th of March, and those people in attendance was the mayor, our CEO, Marjorie Gibbons, uh, Councillor Tilly, the fire chief, Leslie Kenny, and myself. And we had quite a few items of discussion, the first one being the junior firefighters program. Uh, we're gathering up all the information and we're, we're slowly moving forward. We can extend a big thank you to the fire department in Gander for being able to give us all the information because they did there, so we didn't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, we're beating the bushes out there trying to find uh, uh, equipment that's expired, but it can be used for training, for, especially for, for kids. And we, so far, we've been fairly successful. So if there's any fire departments out there that are watching tonight, and I'm sure there's probably <laughs> hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that are watching tonight. Yeah, if you've got any extra equipment, please touch base with us and we'll make arrangements to have it picked up. So uh, we're looking forward to starting that off and, uh, and, and being successful. We discussed the emergency plan. That plan is uh, moving forward at, at a very good pace. Uh, there's a lot of information in there that needs to be corrected, and uh, especially when it comes to f uh, phone numbers and other contact information. But uh, we've reached out to the uh, Emergency Services Division. We had the lady come out. She's taken our emergency plan, and she's taken it back to St. John's. She's going to go through it, pick it apart, <coughs> add recommendations, bring it back to us. Once we have a look at it, all of council and the staff We'll, we'll also have an input into it because uh, even though the, the fire department was the lead, 
there's other organizations within the town that are equally important as well, like Public Works, for example. And if you look at what just happened on the west coast there the other day, as all those big old culverts go flying down the river, well, that could happen here as well, right? You know, the days of 30 and 40 millimeters of rain, those days are gone. Now we're into the 80s and the 100 millimeters of rain. And the, the infrastructure that we have in the ground today just can't, it, it just can't handle that amount of water. So we're, we're, we're slowly moving forward, but we're all heading in the right direction. Uh, we talked about government funding. Uh, in the last, in the budget that just came through, there, there is more money out there for fire services, and we're hoping to look, at, uh, uh, look into that as well. And the fire chief is also putting in an application for funding with regards to upgrading some of the equipment that we have down at the fire station. So, all good. Uh, one of the things that we discussed at the meeting out in Clarenville was uh, cell service. And actually, I bought the question up and asked how many communities here have good cell service. Not a single person in the room, which was about a couple of hundred people, not one person put their hand up that they had good cell service. Actually, it, it started off a, a, a firestorm of debate, all pointed at one organization, four-letter word, and it begins with B, right? And ends with L. And it ends with L. Right? So it's not just the, the town of Holyrood that's uh, having problems with cell service. And it's, it's having a negative effect on residents, it's having a negative effect on businesses, and it's having a negative effect on attracting people to the Avalon Peninsula. So it's, it's, a, it's a, 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 a wider uh, problem than just the town of Holyrood. Okay? And hopefully we'll be able to sort it out. Uh, one of the other things we talked about that probably we've never talked about here before, is uh, radon gas. And I know when we mentioned it <coughs> in the public safety meeting, there was some people there that never heard of it before, right? <coughs> and neither did I until not very long ago. But radon gas, believe it or not, is the second, the second leading cause of lung cancer in people that don't smoke. About 3,000 Canadians die every year because of illness related to radon gas. So if you're a smoker and you live in a, in a house with radon, with a high levels of radon gas, you have a very good chance of developing lung cancer. So there's a program out there, it's called the 100 uh, Radon Challenge. And we've applied for it. And what happens, because uh, CBS just did it last year and they're waiting for the results back. If we are one of the communities that are picked, because this is funded through Health Canada. If we are one of the communities, for example, that is selected in the fall, we will get 100 kits, and they're, they're about the size of a hockey puck, and people can, if, if, if there's more than 100 people, then we put their name in a hat. You come in, you, you sign for your, your, your radon kit, you take it home, you preferably down in the basement, it's got instructions of how to use it, and where to put it. You leave it there for 90 days. At the end of the 90 days, you take it back to the town office. The town office packs all 100 kits up. They send them back to the lab to be, to be read. And the resident, for example, if Councillor Windsor put his in there, the results from his house comes back to him. Nobody else sees it. But the town will get an overall picture of, of everything, but th there's no information disclosed on any person's particular house. So we're, we're looking into that, and if, if we get them, uh, we will make sure that we all get a way they're well used. And CBS has used them, Torbay has used them, and Para, uh, Pasadena has used them as well. Okay. Uh, ice safety, I'm going to let that one for our, my my colleague there who is far more expert at ice, the only ice that I use is in a drink. <laughs> the last one I have before I turn it over to Councillor Tilly is uh, public safety. We had our public safety presentation up at the IEBW building on the 27th of March. We had a great turnout, a lot of very interesting questions, and a lot of absolutely fantastic stories of people because a lot of the stuff had to do with scams. A lot of the people, a lot of the things have to do with uh, 
seniors and being taken advantage. And there was a couple of people there. They had some absolutely fantastic stories. And, and I know the CAO and Councillor King was there, and they can attest to the fact that it did what happened. And we had two gentlemen from the RCMP who did presentations. We had a lady there from Crime Stoppers, and we also had a gentleman there from the Canadian Red Cross. All of them did some fantastic presentations, and we will look at doing it again probably in, in June, and hopefully we'll get a few more extra people. But the information that was provided was absolutely fantastic, and if those people that missed it and they want any of the information, all they have to do is drop by the town office. There's all kinds of booklets there with regards to emergency preparedness. There's also all kinds of booklets there as well with regards to how to protect yourself from scams and other things. And it, it's worth the, the read. And if people want to try to prevent being, being scammed or, or robbed or whatever, then you should take advantage of all this information. It's out there for the public to use, and it, it would be a crime not to take advantage of it. And at this time, I will turn it over to Councillor Teller. Thank you, Councillor. Um, I don't have anything officially prepared for ice safety, uh, but I guess I can pretty much talk about that one off the top of my head for a long while. But we did speak uh, at our um, public safety meeting, and we spoke with Chief Kenny about getting some communications done up through our commu communication department to put out about warnings and just, just general FYIs about this time of year, the ice safety um, is a big concern for uh, anyone who is outdoors people, like myself. Um, every year we statistically have the deaths are going up and up from people who are going across on safe ice. They're taking risks that they don't, don't need to be taking. Um, I guess public awareness is a big thing. Keep ice safe. Uh, remember that the, the skidoos that people are driving are not meant for water. Um, every year there's a big uh, array of people who decide that they're going to do see how far they can skim across the water um, with um, skidoos and that doesn't work. We actually, uh, my search and rescue uh, organization actually did a um, thing with the town of CBS Fire Department several years back about uh, ATVs and showing how ATVs, how quick they actually sink and um, how unsafe they are on ice, um, getting rid of some of the uh, myths that are out there that ATVs will float. So again, um, social media is what we're trying to promote. Um, I know the local search and rescue team put one out a little while ago about ice safety, and about what to do if you do fall through the ice. The, um, Chief Kenny put out one through our communication department uh, last week regarding ice safety again, and I suggest that we circulate that as much as we can and for everyone just to be very ice aware. Okay, great advice. Thank you very much, Councillor Tilly. All right, any other questions or comments on public safety before we move on? If not, we will move on to communications. Councillor Crawley. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just a quick update on our ongoing advocacy through the CRTC and through other large corporations for the cell phone service, as uh, Councillor King pointed out, and it is across the board. So uh, unfortunately, a lot of us seem to be shouting into the wind, but together we're stronger and better. So we'll, we're gonna start kind of snowballing and seeing how many more people we can group in and help out with our efforts to uh, promote it and put it out further. Um, we do want your patience and understanding for our communications of external communications policy. Um, it is a marathon, not a sprint. And as many know, if it's not, if we don't get it right, we'll hear about it <laughs> we'll know about it so we want to make sure that we are getting it right in the meantime we continue to put out as much information as possible through our communication streams we're on our website we have our social media account uh, from the town of holy road on facebook and we have twitter and we have instagram account we are working on those accounts and making sure the information, as Councillor Tilly just mentioned, the ice safety and things that are of utmost importance, garbage collection, anything you need to know can be found on our town website. So you can go there. All the minutes, all the information you're looking for, strategic plan, operation review, anything you're looking for will be found on our site. And know that it is a working site, so it's continuously being updated 
um, revamped, worked on, changed out. We're trying to make it as streamlined as possible. We spent a lot of time over the last little while making a new website so that information would be easier to find. So anything you're looking for, again, the strategic plan, anything like that, can be found on our site. Um, unfortunately, there are a few residents still take away um, and not getting that important message that Pat Curran has worked with us. He worked through the operation review. He worked through the strategic plan. He worked to help us implement various parts of it. He has reported it multiple times, and we have stood up and reported multiple times, and we are actively following all the recommendations, and some of them will take longer than others. So that's what our communications um, committee would like to make sure that it goes out uh, very strongly to the public that again not a sprint it is a working a work in progress that takes time to make sure we get it right um, I'm not sure if there's anything else that yep yeah Laura no um, with regards to um, you know the the website uh, I know that we did have some inquiries with regards to some of the documents that were obtained in there um, and you know it, it not that they didn't align, but they, it was different now that with the strategic plan and with the operational review, those changes. So what we need to tell the public is that that is a working site as well. Yeah, it's a working site as well. And as we move through, um, you know, checking the boxes with our operational review and our strategic plan, then those items as they relate to the specific things on our website will be updated as well. So, you know, we want everyone to have patience because that's not going to happen yeah. as you said it's, it's, it's not it's not a sprint it's not going to happen overnight it's going to happen as we go through things piece by piece mm -hmm. and we don't want to you know we don't want to take down the website we don't want to you know put it under construction or restrict access to it we want people to be able to go in and try to find the information that they're looking for just ask for patience with regards to that as for the a cell phone I know that we are waiting on a reply back um, we don't have we, we can't release anything right now but hopefully during our next public meeting we'll have the um, the information back that we're able to release some information uh, to the public with regards to cell phone yeah, um, okay that's it thanks Okay, um, yeah, I was going to sit down, but I got the corporate services next. So if anyone else has anything else that. Uh, I don't even have to address her now. No. Pay some bills. All right. Um, so we met on April 1st <coughs> yesterday with uh, CEO Marjorie Gibbons, Director of Finance, Marie Searle, myself, and Councillor King were in attendance. Uh, we did a quarterly review, and all our finances are in good standing, kind of getting close to saying great standing right now. Um, at our first quarter, which is of course 25% of the year, uh, everything except one department is under 20% of their spending budget. So we are well on track of maintaining our spending. Um, and that one was environment, and that had to do with our garbage collection payment out. So that's, that's not unheard of, that was totally expected. Uh, we don't have to worry about that, that'll recoup over the next quarter. Um, so yeah, so we'll have another update on our second quarter in July, but as of right now, um, we love this process of making sure that we are maintaining a review every quarter, so nothing is missed. And that is going line by line with each department, mm -hmm. but department by department for counselors. Um, so there's no action items came from that. We, are, we have a donation request from our library. The formal request came in from our library, which is in the budget already. So that is already a budget item. And that is their yearly donation. It has already been allotted, so we just passed that through. And uh, we're really excited to help promote softball Newfoundland as well. We have many residents of um, Holyrood that is actively involved with softball Newfoundland. So uh, there was a request for them as well. And uh, that's it. So we basically spent a lot of time on our finances, so we, uh, we're happy to announce that we're all good. So I'm ready to move into the motions, unless Councillor King has anything else he wants to add. Covered it all. Excellent. Okay. Be it resolved, those accounts tabled in the amount of $158,596.47, check numbers 45724, 
to 45769 and D3920 to D3963 be approved for payment from the general account. So moved. Moved by Councillor Crawley, seconded by Councillor King. Further discussion? General payments and garbage collection is and in normally, there, which just makes it very large. <laughs> normally, right now. when we head into you know this at, at the latter part of this month and into May, you see a big spike in revenue that comes into the town. Oh, this is payment. <laughs> yeah. This is expenses, but again, yeah. it's because the Eastern Regional Service Board is yeah. is being no, paid I just there. Talking about the cash balance. Cash that's balance. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, it was moved, moved seconded. and seconded. Yeah. All those in favor, those against, motion is carried. Okay. And our bank book balance, it's at $1,366.46. Okay. Thank you very much, Councillor Crowley and Councillor King. So that is the agenda. Now we'll move into new business, and I'll do the go around, starting with Deputy Mayor Woodford. Mm, nothing for me this evening. You're good, Councillor King. <laughs> <laughs> So I just have uh, one one point, and uh, as we as we all know, uh, this year has de has been deemed the year of the arts here in Newfoundland and Labrador, and uh, so I, I just have one acknowledgement. Uh, last week, uh, a, a young lady from here in Holyrood, she made a donation of a piece of art to the Holy Cross School, and it's called the Hills of Holyrood. Okay, and we can't wait for the song to come out. So I just want to make sure that uh, she's acknowledged, and her name is Kelly Ann Beshera. She's an absolutely fantastic, very talented artist. And uh, one of the suggestions was that er at every public meeting, we try to identify somebody within the town who, who contributes to art, in, and it could be in all different forms other than painting and stuff like that, or somebody who supports the art. So if somebody got, if, if people out there that got a suggestion or somebody that they want to put their name forward, just send it on to council uh, with a little blurb on, on the, the whole story. And is so I just want to make sure that she was acknowledged with regards to her work and her donation to Holy Cross School. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you, sir. <laughs> Councillor Crowley. Yes, I have a couple of things. Uh, one, in relation to corporate service administration, just as a side note, April 30th is the deadline to pay taxes. Uh, property taxes are due April 30th, and that's by way of payment, but also payment installments. So if you want to set up a monthly payment plan, uh, May 31st is the deadline for water tax. Um, just as mentioned, the library, and I know uh, Councillor King sits on the committee at the library. Um, I want to just put a shout out because our Holy Road Public Library is one of the most active libraries that I can see. There's so much happening in terms of programming. There's so much available for all ages. There's there's babies, there's seniors, there's teens, there's um, when people with uh, mobility issues, they, they have programs for, they have um, information sessions, they promote artists. As Councilor King said, they just saw Emily Hickey came in and did a presentation and did an art class with all ages. So just want <clears throat> to put it out there, that's fantastic library, fantastic programming, it's great, Keep keep looking out so our money is, is well spent there in the town of Holyrood and finally uh, we won't be meeting back so it's National Volunteer Week April 14th to the 21st so thank you to all of our volunteers for the town of Holyrood and beyond so thank you okay thank you Councillor Crowley Councillor Tilly technical difficulties here <laughs> I guess for me, all I just wanted to add in is, they, um, is just my gratitude for being added on to the Recreation Committee and to the Public um, Safety Committee. Um, I think anyone know me know that public safety is my passion and where I, I spend my lifetime now in working with public safety. And also throughout the last 20 years of working with the town of Holy Road with Squid Fest and the Crystal Dip and all those things from a volunteer point of view, um, I think that is going to be a great bit of... Uh, it's going to be a great bit of fun for myself, Council, and Kyle to be working together around some Squid Fest and some upcoming events. So uh, just a thank you, and I look forward to get digging my heels into both committees. Thank you very much, Councillor Tilly, and I'm sure you will dig in your heels because <laughs> I've known you for several years, and when you take on a, an initiative, it's full speed ahead. So 
great fit, as I said earlier. Okay, thank you. Councillor King? No, Councillor Windsor, you can wrap it up. A few things. Or I should say a few comments on one thing. <laughs> Route 60. So, it's extremely disappointed. I'll use the word disgusted that our Route 60 that comes through our community and connects many communities. It's a provincial responsibility and was left off the list for this year's budget. I'd like to echo Councillor Tilly and CBS his frustration. I read in the shoreline and support his commentary. Um, we've made recommendations to the province for the last several years uh, and based on facts, um, we've sought feedback from the residents uh, through the provincial program. Um, appears to be falling on deaf ears. I think that uh, Holy Root, this section of Route 60, has done more than its fair share, acting as a bypass road from the TCH, and that road has taken uh, a heavy burden, an unfair burden, of <coughs> traffic during those times. Some of those sections of roads um, weren't done correctly to begin with for the load and increasing load of heavy equipment, uh, traffic and tractor trailers and drainage. So what to do from here? I mean, it seems like the only thing that gets done in this province or gets attention to an issue is when there's a protest. Yeah. I'm not saying that we had to have a protest, but I think I'm getting there. And recommending one. So uh, that's all, Mr. Mayor. I just want to share the frustration of many residents, not just my own, uh, when our appeals for action are falling or appear to be falling on deaf ears. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, uh, if I could just add to that, uh, to give residents an update, uh, we have received, I received a, uh, an email the other day from the Department of Transportation. Uh, right from the minister and him and his assistant deputy minister who's responsible for roads and the minister's liaison person they want to meet with because uh, I made it clear because I reached out to the CAO to add and forwarded on the email because it's it's important that we all meet you know as many of us as a council with the minister not just myself and uh, so that meeting is called for April, April the 9th at 3 p.m. And the minister will be here in the chamber for the second time to meet with council. What they're going to propose, we don't know, but we're led to believe that it's for a specific reason and we'll have to just wait and see. But we will clearly remind him again that we are going to keep it up until we get some satisfaction and get these roads done because every day they're getting worse and worse and worse. So I'll leave it up to you in terms of protest. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you're right. Sometimes, I mean, to really get, you know, the message in both ears, you really got to do what you have to do. And we've been at this clearly for the past several years and nothing. We're, all we're getting is just potholes filled. Not good enough. Not good enough. And we'll certainly make the minister aware of that. And I personally, and, I, and I'm sure everybody feels the same way, we've been advocating for this for the past several years. We know there are certain areas of the community that are in good shape because they've been done. You know, you come down from the top of Vitches Hill, you know, and or from Salmonier Line right to Mars Bridge. Well, that was all done when Salmonier Line was done. That don't need to be touched. There's certain areas that, that are good, right? While there's others that are in terrible condition, right? So, but not to receive a cent out of this, you know, this big pool of money. Uh, when, when there's so much traffic, you know, traversing that road every day, heading from St. John's and, and going in both directions, there's a lot of traffic. And when you don't get a cent, it's, it's highly disappointing. And, I, and I'm sure we all feel the same way. So I'll, I'm sure we're, we're going to have a, an interesting meeting with the minister. So I'll leave it at that. 
All right. That is the agenda. Uh, date of the next meeting is April the 30th at 6 p.m. Can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Moved by Councillor King, seconded by Councillor Windsor. All those in favour, those against, meeting stands.